Hey guys and girls, we are jumping on today with Jake Wade, Coach Jake Wade. Um, we got some catching up to do. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff he's been doing over the quarantine and over the last few months. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about weightlifting and just kind of catch up with him, get a little bit of his history. Uh, he's been coaching with us for a while. Um, has a pretty good extensive background in weightlifting, but he's been doing some other stuff recently. And uh, so I kind of wanted to jump on and chat with him a little bit about that and uh, kind of talk about some of the things he's been doing and how they uh, can kind of work into what uh, we're doing. Let's see. He's on here now. Let's go ahead and have him join. Let's let that connect. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good. Long time no see, dude. Yeah, man. It's been a hot minute. Been too long. Been too, long. too long. How's it going out there for you? It's going great, man. Just enjoying this uh, this beautiful day. Trying to get ready. Got uh, getting training after this, so just enjoying a little cup of coffee. Awesome, man. Um, so I think uh, most people that have been following us know that you've been uh, coaching with us for a while and. Uh, been competing with us for a little while, but you had a pretty good um, background in weightlifting and maybe some other things prior to this. Give us a little bit of background in uh, kind of your uh, sport and fitness uh, kind of upbringing. Um, yeah, so, you know, for me, I, I really kind of got into fitness late in the game. You know, I didn't really play any sports growing up. And, um, mm -hmm. actually was, um, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I got in trouble. And so, um, ended up going to rehab and through that process kind of fell in love with working out and, um, kind of took that and ran with it and, um, ended up getting involved in CrossFit and it's through CrossFit that I ultimately found weightlifting and my passion and love, love for that. Um, but I did CrossFit for about eight years and then, um, was, was lucky enough to go on a team for regionals the, the final year. And, um, after that, decided I needed kind of some new goals to kind of shift a year to kind of weightlifting and strongman now. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Um, so, you did CrossFit uh, pretty you – were, you were great in CrossFit. Got to go do team with regionals. Got to do – were competitive in that. Got into weightlifting uh, as an athlete. How did you kind of navigate from um, athlete into also coaching? How did that kind of come about? You know, it's weird for me. I, I grew as an athlete through a coach. I, I would say I was a coach before I became an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I had this desire to be, um, you know, athletic, but, you know, with, with not much of a background, I didn't really have anything to go off of, right? So for me, I really leaned into the coaching aspect early. And um, I think that that was a, a huge reason why I was so successful in transitioning and trying to kind of fit in this realm. Um, because it gave me a, a different mindset, you know, I looked mm -hmm. at things from an outside perspective rather than kind of being behind the wheel as a, as an athlete. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was, is monumental in, in my approach and, you know, nutrition, sleeping and things like that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, the things that really make that huge difference, right. It's the, it's the yeah. gains that have the, the highest turnover. So I think that, you know, that was, a you know, extremely beneficial for me in the long run. Yeah. I like that. I think it's, uh, you know, I've always tried to encourage, our athletes as much as possible to self-educate and how much that is important in being an athlete and being successful in a sport. Um, I mean, obviously there's, obviously there's the people that are just in it because they just want to like have fun. Yeah. The game. But I think if you're really trying to get as much as you can out of a sport or a sport like weightlifting, you do have to kind of dive into all right, I'm going to try to learn as much as I can about this. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually had a conversation with Blaine a couple of days ago, kind of in that realm, you know, or mm -hmm. a couple of weeks now, but really just kind of sitting there challenging, you know, as telling him like, Hey, you're, you're getting to be the age, like, you know, you really need to start critically challenging even me, you know, being yeah. in the coach's position of like, Hey, well, well why are we doing this? You mm -hmm. know, and then putting yourself in a position of what you're seeing <laughs> when you're lifting and really just trying to educate yourself as much as possible. Cause if you're trying to get to that, you know, that, like that next stage, cause you know, if you're doing it for, for fun, it's one thing and just kind of, you know, be active. But when you're trying to get that competitive level, 
you got to make every every little bit out of your time you can and so spending time to really focus on that is huge yeah and and that's such a good element for an athlete trying to take it to the next level like bling because you know as much as us as coaches we you know we learn as we're as we're working with an athlete and we learn more as we continue to program over and over we see what works what doesn't work but the athlete has that internal dialogue that we don't really get to tap into so they're going to be able to really pick up and and i try to make our athletes as responsible as much as they can of being like if we if we do something and you find it to be very very beneficial bring it to our attention because that might be something that you need to individually really kind of tap into and and onto yeah and we've had discussions about this in the past about when it comes to like working with an athlete that that intuition is key right like Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of what we're doing from behind the scenes, like, yeah, we know from like a science standpoint and, and what works is a general. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all so unique and diverse and just our anatomy yeah. and, and structure on a cellular level, you know. So having that, you know, that little bit of intuition and communication on what they're feeling on that end can be mm-hmm. monumental in the long run things, you know. Um, so yeah. I agree 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. The I think that's one of the most important things that um, athletes can teach themselves is learn when you can push learn when to pull back learn learn to know kind of like what that's you know uh you know as much as i i like and dislike almost figure out how to rpe it learn what your energy levels are that day learn what you can get out of that workout to make it as successful as possible as opposed to sometimes just like beating your head on the wall because I'm supposed to be hitting 90% today and 80% feels so heavy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, as much as I'd love to speak <laughs> as a master on that topic, I'm 29 years old and I'm just now starting to figure out that, that piece of training, man. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, and I think it's tough, you know, when you come with, you have that like really competitive mindset and you, mm-hmm. you visualize yourself, you know, at a certain point, you kind of get used to that grind, you know, just leaning into yeah. its push. And uh, I tend to shift a little too far on that spectrum, I think, when it comes <laughs> to training. So, I mean, in terms of long-term, de- learn- long-term development, that's critical, you know. And it's – it's For sure. And this sport is a – it's a long-term sport, right? It's, it's typically mm-hmm. – for those who are in it the longest are the ones that are usually more successful. And in yeah. order to stay in it, you know, you got to be injury-free. So having the ability to push and pull and know when to, you know, put the – push the guest pedal on your training and when to back off is critical. Yeah, absolutely. And I think just like for your own like mentality. Yeah. Like you're if you're just pushing, pushing, pushing and there's times where you have to do that. And oh, yeah. you know, and that's also there's times when the coach has to say, I don't care, you gotta hit that today. Oh you absolutely. There's, well, that, those, that, there's those moments where you have to make sure that you're preparing them for like when you know as a coach that they're physically capable and they're just like mentally not there. You got to figure out how to get them mentally there sometimes. But you also can't go into every single workout and feel like you're just hitting a brick wall every single time. You're going to you're not going to want to do the sport anymore. Well, and I think that's where it comes into, you know, regulating that intensity mm-hmm. helps you stay motivated, right? In the sense of not getting burnt out. So as a coach, you almost need to do some preventative care and making sure that you're keeping your athletes from getting to that point. You know, yeah. Which- yeah, for sure. Can be, can be real tricky, right? <laughs> yeah, it can be real tricky. I mean, <laughs> as a coach, you think you're sometimes doing enough when you're like, well, I programmed them, you know, six doubles at 80%. But then you look over at the bar and you see that they've got 95% on the bar. And you're like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. You're like, sometimes it takes more as a coach, too, than just like writing it and putting it out there as the program. Oh, you yeah. Know? Absolutely. You kind of have, have, have to put your helicopter parent hat on. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so um, let's talk about you as an athlete right now, like, or not, not right now. We'll get into right now here in a minute. Let's, uh, let's talk about you as a weightlifting athlete. Okay. Um, what do you, what was kind of like a, a highlight moment? What were some kind of the big moments that stand out for you? Um, achievements as as you as an athlete, and then we'll kind of go into maybe as you as a coach. Yeah, I think uh, for me as an athlete, um, 
one of my personal, my biggest achievements was, um, was hitting a, uh, 170 clean and jerk <laughs> yeah, dude. And then jerking 178. I would say those were my top two goals. Hitting that 170 in competition, um, was awesome. You know, yeah. unfortunately I ended up, um, I didn't hit all my snatches. So it was a little, yeah. a little disappointing there, but I, I, I you know, I kind of look back at it. If, if I had made all three attempts that day, I'm not sure if I would have, would have had that chip on yeah. my shoulder to hit that 170. Cause was it what we'd hit it on the second attempt to kind of give me a chance if, in case we miss. And I mean, smoke that for that second attempt, but I think adrenaline at that point, but, um, yeah, I think, you know, for me that hitting that 170, it just, you know, even to this day, sometimes, you know, I'll go back and, <laughs> and look at it. Just, yeah. I do it too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work to get to that point, and you know, I had to overcome a lot of different variables. I mean, mm -hmm. to get my legs where I needed them to to stand up that weight, because uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a decent pull, uh, decent shoulder strength and speed, but my my leg strength has always been a weakness, right? So I think I was squatting, gosh, three to four times a week uh, on the cycle. You were and, doing a lot, and I think we also, you were also eating like a horse at the time. I think. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, I <laughs> I like. I, I'm I'm kind of on that train again right now, and I'm starting yeah. to remember the, just the indigestion, and I just <laughs> I walked around. I was just a big gas ball, you know what I mean? It was like no one would line up. Like I just I would always lift in the front at Endura Lab. And yeah. During that phase, I had to shift to the back because I felt bad for the people in the <laughs> trains, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Had the power gut going, dude. Oh yeah, but you know, and I tell you what, in, in preparation for that cycle in specific, I mean the the nutrition and the eating was by far harder than any training sessions i mm -hmm. had yeah uh just because of the volume you know and people you know you'll talk to people and they're like oh you're bulking that's awesome and i was like mm, no. but, but is it you know once it gets <laughs> once you start getting into that five thousand calorie range it's 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 not enjoyable i don't care who you yeah, are that was always that's always kind of like annoying thing to me where people are like oh, i wish i could just eat as much as i could and all this kind of stuff I was like, I, I get it. Dieting and cutting weight sucks. Yeah. But it, it sucks just as much as bulking. Oh, it yeah. It sucks just as much as dieting and losing weight. It's, it is miserable. I mean, I went through the same process and uh, when I was trying to move up a weight class a long time ago. Um, and I remember having to drink milk all day. I'd be yeah. coaching and drinking milk, I got so fucking tired of milk. And 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 were, 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 you, were you in a CrossFit gym? Yeah, yeah. Like, so, oh, yeah. Oh, and that and you just add that that heat, you know? Oh, it was like know? warm. Yeah. 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 Hot, sweaty, drinking milk after I've been training, and it was terrible. And uh, and just but always feeling full. Yeah. Like always feeling heavy, always feeling full. And I don't I don't like that. I'm like I'm a huge like I feel my sharpest when I'm like fasted. Oh yeah. I mean, we, we've talked, we've talked about this. Yeah. It's just, but I tell you what, um, so I finally figured out how to, what's kind of been a, a, I guess a trick for myself in a sense to kind of get to where it's not as much work is, um, I actually sounds weird, but I've started watching people just like, you know, those like large meal eating where people yeah. just sit down and cook a bunch of food and then just eat. <laughs> so yeah. at the end of the night while I'm cooking and eating, I'll just, I'll just turn on YouTube and just, you know, put it on put it on the tv and i'll sit there and just yeah it's like i'm sitting there having dinner with brian shaw's he's like meal prepping, <laughs> you know it's like it's like while you're li like trying to get yourself hyped up for lifting so you yeah. go back and you watch like olympics you're going yeah. to like eating contests to get ready yeah. for <laughs> oh yeah just get you just gotta get hyped up man just gotta get hyped, <laughs> just gotta get hyped up yeah if i can destroy this yeah, yeah damn straight that's awesome dude um I think you, you tapped into something kind of cool there where, um, and I think this is a big separation in athletes, where I think a lot of people are really good at doing the physical part. And because it's fun for a bunch of people to train, like they enjoy coming in the gym, they enjoy lifting, they enjoy the training. And that's like part of their day. It's part of their socializing. It's part of all that. But I think a big separation between like, the athlete that just gets good because they're very good at training and then the athlete that can take the time to do everything that's outside the gym like are you also working on your food like you said that's harder than the training itself yeah are you working on getting sleep are you recovering are you doing your mobility i mean and really that next step is the person that can like do all of those things as well as they train 
Oh, absolutely. And I think it's figuring out and, and more on top of that, importantly, is figuring out really what's the biggest area of weakness for you, right? Like I found personally, I was like, I was really good at prioritizing sleep. You know, I was really good at prioritizing, you know, uh, certain, you know, my posture routine and mobility aspects of stuff. Yeah. But nutrition for whatever the, the gaining aspect was always something that, that struggled. So rather than just kind of keep hitting, hitting my head against the wall, I had to find a new way to kind of get over this hurdle and, and get to where my goals were needed, you know, because yeah. I could just talk up and be like, oh, well, I'm not capable of gaining weight, I guess, you know, I'll just stay in this weight class or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, it's very I, easy I, to just fall into that. Yeah, and I think that that's where people really limit themselves on uh, experiencing that, that, um, that ability to kind of overcome something like that's, that's coming away that overcoming the obstacle that's coming between you and your goal. And I think that at, at times we look at goals as more of a like, Oh, an achievement and a reward. But I think that yeah. the, the real obstacles that you can come and the real success comes from the little things, you know, that you yeah, do absolutely. cleaning that up. So, I know, uh, I know you and me talked about these books over and over. So I know that you've read it, but the, the Ryan holiday that pulls the way. Oh yeah. Good yeah. book. That's a good one. Good. I, uh, I actually got a new one um, that I, I just started diving into um, by, gosh, Jordan Benson? Mm, I don't know. I can't, remember, I, I can't remember his last name, but I'll, I'll send it over your way. But it's it's a lot of, he he, he hits a few points on some things that, it, it couples Ryan Holiday's books real well. Awesome. I mean, I always like his stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely shoot that over. And I'll put it, uh, I'll put it in the show notes too. Um, all right, so let's shift now from as an athlete, as a coach. What about some uh, standout points? Um, you've had some pretty good achievements as a coach as well. Um, what, what kind of stands out on that end? Um, a, a few things that stand out to me is, um, you know, my first year behind the program, taking over Lone Star, getting mm -hmm. to the Nationals was, um, yeah, dude. was an awesome feeling, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and then – Second on that would be um, Blaine, getting Blaine to mm -hmm. graduation, having him get a scholarship and just being a part of that journey and, and, and his. Yeah, it um, was a really cool moment. That was that was recent, just so if people don't know, um, Blaine, uh, I don't know what his Instagram handle is, but uh, you can. Blaine, Blaine Brooks, 81 kilograms. <laughs> Blaine Brooks, but just recently uh, he got a scholarship to go uh, lift over at uh, – uh, Leonard Ryan with uh, Travis Mash, and uh, it was pretty cool. Jake got to be there for that signing. Um, yeah, that was that was, a, that was a cool moment. Yeah, and he uh, actually, I guess uh, Travis just posted the like a little tutorial of their training facility. It looks nice, man. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's it set up, man. It is, man. I mean, I I, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> not, not one bit. You know what I thought was really cool that I'd never seen before was those reverse hyper combos with the back extensions. Yes. Okay. It took me. I was looking. I was like, "What the hell am I?" You know, I had to like pause for a second. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at here? Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah. yeah. Put the reverse hyper on the other side of the pad. But yeah, I was so. I mean, you know, another one of those moments where you're like, "Man, I wish I would have thought of that." Yeah, but yeah, that it was it was a legit setup. It, it definitely got uh, got me excited to see Blaine out there lifting. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm excited for him in this next stage and what's to come. I know it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to see him kind of grow as he uh, takes off into college. Hopefully, he can kind of finally get his uh, weight gain situation ironed out. So <laughs> hopefully, they just start shoveling him food. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, he, so does that mean that he's also done doing like any other outside sports? Because he was also doing track and field and all that kind of stuff. So he's going 100% weightlifting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. That'll help. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. But, um, and then I think I would say third on that list would be going, going coaching Cindy at the CrossFit games as a master athlete mm. two cool. times. That was, that was a really cool experience being able to be in her corner with that and, yeah. um, you know, be, be behind the scenes on that. The CrossFit games experience was, was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something that, uh, that I early on, I mean, that was, that was such a different thing than anything else I'd ever coached before because back in 2000, I think it was the 2009 and 10 or maybe it was the 10 and 11 games. I got the chance to go and coach Candace uh, Wagner. Oh yeah. CrossFit games. And then we also took the master's athlete, uh, Ken Couture. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, that was one of my favorite moments in coaching because 
it's unlike weightlifting um, where you're with one athlete, it's kind of, you go through their six lifts and then they're done. Yeah. This is like, you go through that athlete, but then you're thinking about the next workout and you're thinking about the next workout. It's definitely a completely different dynamic. And that was a, uh, that was a, that was a pretty cool experience. I'd never had anything like that before. I mean, it's so different than, you know, my previous coaching and gymnastics and then weightlifting now it was a oh, different. Yeah. yeah. It's just a different vibe as a whole. You know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of that, it kind of has that, like, you know, it's, it's a sport event at the end of the day, but it has it has a very professional feel to it, you know. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed it and the energy there and just the people and everything about it. I don't know. Yeah, it was cool. I uh, I hope that we see, with, with all the changes going on, I hope that we see a bit of an uptick in that uh, that realm in sport again. I mean, it, it really had something pretty cool going there for a while and then it just kind of started fading away yeah i'm hoping the new ceo brings back regionals you know and, and not not even necessarily for the community the competition standpoint for from a community standpoint you know it, it felt like it kind of here it, it was like almost like a you know catalyst for the community you know? yeah for sure i mean it's like i mean with the the people that go to it's like looking at the difference between going to like nationals and then going to like you know the world's or the Pan Ams or something like that. Like the Pan Ams are great and they're fun to watch, but you're looking at the very, very like small percent and not many people are there, you know, supporting a lot of other athletes. Where nationals, you have a lot of hometown people getting together, people going out and supporting each other. And so there's like that really good like stair step bridge. But now that it's like you go from just your gym straight to the CrossFit Games, yeah. I mean, you miss out on that whole, like, people in this region, in this region, just like those CrossFit communities all kind of coming together to support their hometown athletes. Oh, yeah. And it just, I don't know. I think that also for me, it's like, you know, outside the community aspect as someone who, who um, didn't really have a sport growing up, regionals for me was like my fire. Mm -hmm. Like going yeah. to regionals or watching regionals just it kept a, a fire lit underneath me to keep pursuing my goals. And I don't, I don't know if I would have stuck with it if, if uh, re regionals wasn't a thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As a, because there was a lot of people and I was training um, a lot of people in CrossFit. I mean, you know that. Um, and, but a lot of the people that I was training, we weren't really training for the games. Yeah. We were training to try to get them to regionals. Yeah. We knew what their limitations were. But we thought that we had the chance to individually maybe get them to regionals. And then once regionals went away, it was kind of like, well, what's the point? What, what's the point? What am I going to do now? And, and selfishly, I was kind of like, well, at least if regionals goes away, we're going to get a lot more people in weightlifting. weightlifting. <laughs> but then that didn't happen, really. It didn't, I was surprised, <laughs> you know? man. It really, like, I was expecting there to be, like, a big, yeah. or be, like, some, some, you know, People, you know, come out of left field, like some dark horses just like appear and snatch yeah. 145 as a 96. You know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah. some beast, but it, it never happens. So. Yeah, we really didn't see that. We really didn't see that shift. So I was it's like, the Kool Aid, man. The Kool Aid's too strong. <laughs> it's way too strong. <laughs> way too what the hell? Strong. So now I'm like, well, if they're not going to come over to my sport, I'd at least like to see them at regionals again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like at least like <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's awesome that, you know, that you've been able to kind of go through those experiences as a coach. And, um, you know, I, I hope that, you know, as, as you continue to coach, I'm sure we'll have more and more, uh, moments to talk about, but let's, uh, let's take the shift a little bit because as an athlete now, um, you know, I've got a lot of people kind of going through this, uh, limbo area where, um, I mean, I've got a bunch of our weightlifters doing, you know, half conditioning now because there's no real competitions around the corner. Yeah. And I've got some that were doing more just like power lifting at the time because we just needed like a break from weightlifting and we don't really know what's going to go on in that realm. And so you've uh, recently kind of gone down the strongman route. Yeah, yeah. So, um it's been good. I mean, I mean, from our conversation, right, like just during this time, there isn't a whole lot going on. And mm -hmm. I saw a competition on. Um, so I guess I'll rewind kind of I had an injury. What was it like seven, eight months ago? And so ended up what was I doing like log presses or something to protect my wrist. But 
um, ended up doing a competition, like an amateur strongman just for fun. And from that, I got an invite to nationals. So I was, um, I was looking and the, the next thing I could qualify for was the Arnold. Right. And mm -hmm. I saw meat pop up in the area. It's three weeks now, but you know, July 18th. And uh, winner gets an invite to the Arnold. Um, so it's an international strongman event. Um, and so I was like, you know what? Like, I've been just, you know, messing around in the garage, basically doing strongman stuff anyways. You know, like, might as well just kind of use this time to lean into that and see what I can do. Yeah. So it's been good. You know, I think that I found, um, I found a little bit more success in that kind of creating balance between the two, weightlifting and kind of strongman and some other things. Um, so being able to go from like a 12 to, you know, 12, eight to 12 week block doing strongman and then back to weightlifting has been, it's been good for me to stay mentally engaged in my training. You know, I find myself continuing whatever I'm doing, I'm looking forward to going in and do it. And then, uh, the other thing is, is, uh, injury wise, uh, for me, I thought I, th I was worried going into strongman just cause you hear a lot of like, you know, guys getting injured. Um, but I, I found the, the balance between the two has been really good for me. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, there's obviously going to be, I mean, it's another strength sport. Yeah. So it's going to have good carryover. But I find that people that have more variety in their programs in general, I think a lot of times, now there's some people that do great with just the, you know, this is my squat day, this is my overhead day, and they, and they can just, some, I was never that athlete, but they could just like, you know, periodize that for the rest of their life and then they're good to go yeah. but then i find that there's a lot of athletes that you know they're going to sustain the the wear and tear or the injuries because of the repetitiveness of what programming can sometimes look like or at least the same movements i mean we only have so many movements in weightlifting that we can do yeah. so we try to vary it with uh you know adjusting the programming or accessory work but uh, sometimes just like training and doing something completely different here and there, um, I think it kind of creates that athleticism that transfers over really well. Oh, yeah. That variability that can um, prevent some of the normal repetitive injuries that happen. That breakdown, yeah. yeah. I've, I found the biggest thing, though, and it's a fine line of just making sure that you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? Because. Mm -hmm. You know, the goals, like, even though they're kind of somewhat similar with strong, you know, strong man weightlifting, it's all strength based sport, right? But the, the positions that I'm putting myself in and the, you know, in a lot of ways, I have to change my physiology in certain areas of my body that I'm working to develop, right? So biggest thing is mitigating and making sure that I'm still prioritizing, you know, mobility, right? So yeah. during this phase, you know, I still do a lot of SOTS press, just being in the bottom of the hole and having that bar overhead. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because that's a, that's a big piece that's, that's lost quickly, but no, I, I've seen some really good upside and turnover in terms of just my general strength, because, uh, you know, I've always been somewhat explosive and fast, but mm -hmm. I've, I've always lacked that static strength. So it's been really good to kind of lean in this area and realize how, how weak I, I really am. Yeah. <laughs> that's I start cool. comparing my numbers to some of these other guys. I'm like, well, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though. Um, so for, for me, I don't really know. Uh, I haven't looked into strongman stuff that much at all. Um, tell me about the, like, what, what type of events would you be competing in at, at a strongman competition? Yeah, so this, uh, this upcoming competition, um, I'll just use that as, as an example. Uh, the first event is a, a log shoulder to overhead, uh, 60 seconds to do as many reps, right? So mm -hmm. that one. Uh, weight's 235 pounds, the log's 12 inches, so you, you got to get it to your shoulder. And then it's just really any way you want to get it to locked out. So you can press out all you want. You can split jerk, squat jerk. There's where there's a huge advantage of having <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, press out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did a test run yesterday, and I'm going to be honest, at least, at least like 30% of them were press outs. <laughs> but um so that's that was that's one event um event two is a uh it's a super set or like a medley so you got a 700 pound yoke carry for i think it's uh 30 meters mm -hmm. and then uh 275 uh, pound farmer's carry in each hand for back those 30 meters so it's quick sprint um and they're actually this one this competition's actually pretty cool uh um, wait wait what was the weight on those uh farmer carries 275 each 275 in your hand. 
you should you should see my like because my grip strength's horrible, right? So I just like hook grip the hell out of it. Yeah. And like you should just see my thumbs afterwards. Is it just like a pancake after yeah. <laughs> like a tennis racket for a thumb at the end? Oh yeah. No, I like, got tears and stuff down my fingers, <laughs> skin coming off. It's it's awesome. It's great. Yeah, I don't know that I would be able to hold I don't think I could single hand grip that. I don't know that, that would be a possibility. <laughs> It, it's taken a while to get used to. Uh, that was that was probably the thing that gave me the, the biggest issue at first, but I, I've been able to kind of figure it out and get over that hurdle. Um, but then uh, event three is a um, it's a an interesting event. It's, uh, it's I'm trying to see if I can explain it, but it's called Fickle's Fingers. So it's basically giant telephone poles that are attached to you know a uh, a hinge on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you've got to get it to your shoulder and then flip. And it, like flips over to the other side. Yeah, I've seen those before. Yeah, so I've been on my nature walk. I've been flipping trees and <laughs> <laughs> trying to push yeah. them in the lake. Like I'm, how I'm not about training that? Yeah, and people always walk in like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Um, and then we've got stone, so it's like a five stone series. So it's picking the stone up, putting it on a ledge, and then um, max deadlift. So we have a max deadlift from a. Um, it's from a wagon wheel, so it's a 15 inch height, so a little bit less distance to pull. So. Yeah, um, and and is that is that kind of like a comment? Like the events change up per strongman competition. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like uh, you know, I, I, it's like a combination between you know CrossFit and weightlifting, right? It's, so, yeah, it's like a strength based, yeah, varied kind of type thing. Yeah, and so they typically re release the events, um, you know, 12 to 15 weeks out, so you kind of know what you're dealing with. Um, but, yeah, every every comp is different. I can at least appreciate that, that they give you, like, enough time to, like, train for what you're going to go out there and perform, so that way you're not trying to figure it out all on the spot. I thought uh, that was, like, a little bit of a – you know, I thought that was a little bit of a flaw in some of the CrossFit competitions – Oh man, you're telling me it's so it's so much anxiety and stress, or you know what I mean? Because it's just like you're you're shooting in the dark until like what a week or two out, and then you're just scrambling. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, an event. The I think it was I can't remember if it was the first or second games that we took Candace to, but the event was you had to take all of these uh, sandbags, and they started out really light, and they got up to heavier ones. And you had to take them from one side of the stadium to the other side of the stadium. And then you had to get them up onto the wall, up above a wall, where yeah. uh, into the stadium, and then take them up the stairs. I remember that event, yeah. Okay. So, so nobody knew what the event was. And yeah. they, like, kept you in the dark, and they made sure nobody knew what was going on and all the above until you walked out there and they explained it to you. And so what happened, though, is there were a lot of girls – that were really really short mm -hmm. and so the first heat came out there and they put it like i can't i think it might have been a barrel so they had to put it in a barrel run it take it across and then they're tossing these sandbags up and over the wall and they get to these heavy ones and these girls can't toss it over the wall yeah it's like even at full lockout they're still yeah, short yeah you know, so, so like... there's no way for these short girls to get it over a wall and then this one girl figured out that if she took all the light sandbags and stacked them up so she was standing on top of them oh wow then she could throw the heavier ones over that's smart but this was after we had gone through a heat you, yeah and the next heat everybody got the information Damn. <laughs> all your small ones yeah. and toss the heavy ones over so the whole first heat got fucked over yeah and i'm like but if they would have known the event going into it and they would have known what the wall was if they would have had like 12 weeks to practice it they could have figured out all these scenarios yeah. to where they could have actually like performed their fitness as opposed to like just being in like the luck of the draw of being in the right heat to know what to do. Yeah, that's where the military aspect or the military influence in CrossFit, I think, is a little bit of a detriment, right? That yeah. prepare for the unknown and knowable. It's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, this is a sport, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of have a bit of an idea. You yeah. Know? It's, it's weird. To, it's it's kind of weird to go into a sport not knowing what you're about to play. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, on top of that, it was cool though to see the. Uh, it was fun as a spectator to see the the evolution of like, oh, this person figured it out, trickled over. But then you saw like 
But then the whole last heat like fucking killed it. Yeah, because they knew. And... Yeah. That's always been the case, right? I mean, the the last heats always kind of have that advantage to kind of strategize and things like that. So I yeah, I get that to some extent. And I kind of get I kind of get that in the extent of, you know, like racing. You try to have your the people that had uh, or in gymnastics we used to do this too. The people with the highest scores got to go last. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of earn your spot to go at the end. Uh, yeah. And so then you kind of have like maybe times that you know you have to beat. And so that's your advantage of kind of like these pre-trials is you kind of earn your spot to know what you need to beat. And then if you didn't make it to that, then you had to try to set the best time. But that's like, but to also, but I have like this disadvantage of even strategy though. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, strongman's the same way. So I think that's where, you know, being able to capitalize the events you're good on are so important, you know, yeah. and take those big wins home. Do they do, do you basically stay in the same order from event to event? Is that how they do those? No, so the first event is kind of random. And then after that, it, switch, it switches to that to where it's it's populated. Based off of the event before, it kind of hold, gives you your spot, which I think that's a good layout. I think earning spots is a good way of going at it. Oh yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, I think if, if you can get momentum on your side, you, you deserve a right to capitalize that. You yeah. Know? But when your first events your weakness, you're like, ah, oh, shit, shit, yeah, <laughs> and then and then <laughs> playing catch up the whole time. Um, so and then they, I'm assuming that they also do weight classes, right? Yes, they do. Yeah, there, there's are a little bit big, uh, more spread out. There aren't many. I think there's only four weight yeah. classes total, and it's like a thirty pound gap, I believe, between the, between most of them. So. Um, I'm in the 105 kilogram class. Mm, cool. Uh, currently, I'm sitting at like 101, 102, so I'm still a little under. So, got to try to put on a little weight. Yeah. In a couple weeks. That's, why that's why you're eating like crazy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you done any weightlifting during this cycle? Yeah. Yeah, I have been. What uh, do you do? So. What do you feel? Do you feel like there's been some transfer over? Have you felt like what have you felt different doing more strongman and then doing some weightlifting? For me, I, I noticed my overhead started. So like at the beginning of the cycle, I didn't do as much weightlifting and I started re-implementing it because I, I noticed that I started to lose a little bit of that pop, you know, that little bit of explosiveness. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been something I think has been um, a, a critical for me as an athlete to maintain. So, you know, since then, you know, I've, I've re-implemented like, you know, power cleans and I've been doing a lot of muscle snatches kind of turn over and then push press. So those are the three I've kind of implemented where I know I won't be over training or putting myself in a position to where I may strain, you know, something. Yeah. For me, my biggest issue right now is going into that deep squat. It's still something that mm -hmm. is getting a lot better, but I don't want to push. Yeah. Um, but, you know, from a, from a doing a strictly weightlifting or a strictly uh, strongman standpoint, um, I feel really, I feel really strong in certain positions, but I, I would say that I felt more athletic when I was doing weightlifting, mm -hmm. right? I, cause I, I just felt more robust and more explosive. Um, and I was able to do more after training to where strong, man, it's like the days that I've got, you know, stones, so I have a day that I do my stones, yoke farmers, and then deadlift all in one day. Like, I can't do anything. Like, after that, I'm like, I'm literally done for the day. Like, yeah. Go, go home and sit down and yeah, dude. <laughs> stare at the ceiling for a while. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, for me, having, you know, the weightlifting component of it was really good to kind of maintain a lot of that, you know, just general athleticism mm -hmm. where I feel like I kind of compensate that in strongman for rigidity and, and stability and strength because a lot more of the positioning is much more um, – stacked or in mobile right like i don't need to be strong in some of these exposed positions so um and then strongman you know as a whole um i feel like i can just i could pick up anything right like my pull you know is is pretty absurd at, at this point mm -hmm. so that that yeah. that i was sure from the beginning so you saying something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no it feels good i'm excited to see what this you know at the end of this competition what what that turns over to in weightlifting so yeah fun. that'll be interesting i'm looking forward to that too yeah um i think strongman does a good job at um because the goal is to figure out who's the strongest yeah 
And so I think the events and the things that they pick is they do a really good job in almost taking a little bit of that athletic um, part out of it, you know, because that's not necessarily what they're, they're not trying to find the most athletic person. Yeah. They're not trying to find the most agile person. They're trying to find the person that is the strongest. And somebody asked me this like years ago, they were like, what do you think is the best test of strength? And they're asking me as like a weightlifting coach. And I think that they're expecting something like, you know, a squat or a clean yeah. or something like that. I was like, I was like, really, if we wanted to like test strength between like me and that person over there, I think the best test would be to say, both of y'all pick up some, this thing that's really heavy and carry it as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's basic. It's yeah. Simple and the stronger person is probably going to be able to carry it further. Oh, yeah. Well, because it's it's when you add also when you add in that awkwardness component, you have to recruit so many more fibers to be mm -hmm. able to sustain that grip yeah. or the positioning to go. So the level of what you're demanding for yourself really kind of goes through the ceiling. So yeah, your overall strength is just has to be up because if oh, there's yeah. with what we do in weightlifting, the movements are so specific that we get very strong in these very specific positions. Yeah. But now if you're holding something in kind of this flexed back position that you're not used to, and you know, you're probably going to break down much quicker than somebody else who's got that, you know, uh, I guess That's unconventional country. strength. That country strength, right? Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. farmer boy strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. Um, and, uh, but I think that that's cool that they've been able to like figure out some of those events. And it's almost, yeah, you're right. It's almost like they, they, they almost looked, I feel like they looked at people, the, you know, that countryside stuff that they were doing, yeah. where they were just like tossing these hay bales yeah. and like dragging the stuff. And they're like, you know what? There might be a sport there. There you go. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, cool. So, what's the uh, what's on the agenda in uh, the rest of the day and in the near future? Ah, uh, so today I've just got uh, I've got a pretty short, sorry, quiet or slow day. So I've just got to finish a few things. I'm going to go. Was it time three? So I had train right after this and. Uh, Today in training, I'm hitting, it's more my uh, accessory day. So I've got like speed deadlifts, which should be fun. Um, staying light there. And then I've got um, just some lower body accessory, just kind of keep things in line before I hit some events on Wednesday. And then the rest of the day, I'm uh, starting a new job. So just kind of trying to get prepared around that, doing some paperwork, some other things, wrap my head around and get prepared to start that tomorrow. So. Nice. Nice to yeah. Congrats. That's awesome. Um, so does with your with your strongman training does it look like how often are you training the specific events and then how often are you doing like accessory exercises like just a conventional deadlift or something like that um so on my uh, first day of the week i do uh one event which is the log shouldered overhead mm -hmm. and then uh all the other events i stack on a saturday so at the end of my week um, kind of similar to what we do right with kind of maxing yeah, out all Friday. days like snatch and clean and jerk day you kind of do your event training day yeah so i was doing four days and i've, I've bumped it up to five these last couple weeks um so it depend depending on the week i'll either it friday or saturday but um now mondays i'll do that log event and then everything else on uh friday or saturday and the other three days are really just kind of more of deadlift squat ton of accessory yeah. a lot of bodybuilding to try to keep size on Mm -hmm. that's cool and um are, then, you doing, are you doing all your own programming no no i'm actually working with a buddy i'm up in illinois um cool. he uh he he programmed for um a few a few other guys that went to the arnold so um and he, no. he knew i programmed for this comp so i thought i thought i'd give that a shot so i've been working with him the last couple weeks um Good. just for my strongman time space and all that stuff up because I, I had no idea right like yeah for one sure of the things that he um I would, would have never crossed my mind to do for strongman is um, speed ladder. So I do the speed yeah. ladder quite a bit. Yeah, a lot of footwork drills. Um, just because you don't realize those moving events count as so much. You know, there's a lot on the table, especially <laughs> someone who's not as statically strong as me. You know, being able to make up with spe speed and technique in my footwork really mm -hmm. goes a long way on those yeah. events where you're kind of moving weights and moving things. Yeah, but that would definitely be probably like the last thing I would even think about if I were programming somebody's strongman. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I, uh, 
it's been a good learning experience for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm interested to see kind of I mean, you and me have always kind of done this experimenting and then seeing what we can like implement back into like weightlifting too. Oh so yeah. To see like kind of what you get out of this and then what we're also able to like pull from it mm -hmm. to say this is something that I think our weightlifters should be doing too. Oh, and uh, you know, going from, you know, pulling stuff from strongman, from movement from gymnastics, you know, I think that's right. kind of been something fun that me and uh, and you and our other coaches have been able to like play around with for a little while and then yeah. be like, all right, now what do we get to uh, put our athletes through? <laughs> exactly. And it's, I think it's awesome, you know, like we kind of figured out having me do those eight weeks on, eight weeks off has been mm -hmm. really good to kind of keep that trend moving the same direction. And, um, you know, being able to kind of expose myself and learn some of these movements, I'm starting to see some things that really would fit in well. And, you know, a lot of our weightlifters daily that we wouldn't think, you know, in, in the things that we're exposed to just with weightlifting. Right. Yeah. So it's been it's been fun. And um, I think that the there's a lot there's a lot that um, many athletes can get from implementing some strong strongman movements. Now, things like the stone, you know, I think is a little yeah. just not worth it. You Probably know, not there, yeah. Yeah, the cost versus reward, and there's not a lot of turnover for that. But, you know, things like the yoke and then the log, you know, I was surprised. I can imagine those carries are probably huge. Yeah, you yeah know? the farmer's carries and the, the uh, we'll do sandbag carries out front, too. Yeah. Um, but just those things where we're, we're under, we're under, you know, under more time, under tension, right? You know, yeah. I think as weightlifters, we don't experience as many different, we don't tap into as many different energy systems, so... Being able to get in that, I think, is a higher turnover and, than we think. Yeah, and I like that because I'm I'm a huge advocate of, like, bracing the core and then having to move. But I always kind of do it in the form of, like, gymnastics movements. So we'll do, like, a hollow body flutter kick or something like that where you got to yeah. move, but you got to keep the core really, really braced because that obviously transfers over huge to weightlifting. But something like those carries are almost like the exact same thing. Oh, you yeah. You get everything locked in and braced and tensed. And then you're also still doing something a little bit dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that'd be that'd be fun to kind of throw some of those in there. Plus, I think like the change is fun for people. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And uh, even though, you know, the probably my favorite thing, because when I did that first strongman comp, I didn't I didn't train for it really. Right. We we kept my weightlifting the same mm -hmm. and then yeah. we just threw it on as accessory at the end. <laughs> yeah. Know? Uh, which was interesting. <laughs> it was it was fun, but it was like at the end I beat. I was pretty dead. Yeah. But, um, the um, one of the things I enjoyed most during that time was sled drags. I would do uh, reverse sled drags and sled pushes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that I had probably the highest turnover to weightlifting specific for me. Yeah. personally. I think it just comes from that lack of leg strength as a whole, right? Because you're just yeah. constantly under t tension in that positioning. Yeah, and that's such a good movement because you can get a lot out of it. Like you said, it can also have like the conditioning element to it. But there's also not like a bunch of like eccentric loading where you're going to be like really sore the next day from it, too. So it's such a recoverable movement that you can get a lot out of. Oh, and yeah. Like you said, it's simple. I mean, you just strap a sled to you and you start moving. Just start moving, start pulling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had those programmed the final day of everybody's training this last four weeks. Oh, yeah, and, that'd be fun. Yeah, I, I think about 50% of people have been doing it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's that's not a bad percentage for no. no, and that's that's a tough one to get yourself like there were so many times where I had to like really like just make myself get out there and do it. Yeah. Because it's just me you know, by the time we've done everything we do in weightlifting, it's like God, you want me to do what with my legs now? <laughs> like like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get done with a five by five squat and you're like, Yeah, I gotta go do sled sprints. Come on. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um it's cool, man. Um I don't really got much else, so I'll, I'll throw this out there to try to make it a little bit more real. Um, and uh, but something, one of my kind of, I would consider a short-term goal because it's a matter of just hopefully in the next uh, year to few years is I really want to take all these things that my athletes have uh, been doing that's a little bit outside of just specifically weightlifting and try to start pulling them back into Blue Wave. So we're really looking at trying to uh, solidify our own location in our own space where we can set up uh, just kind of a complete uh, strength gym. Yeah. 
on everything from, you know, our weightlifting will obviously be our foundation, but start getting some of the strongman equipment in there, start getting uh, some power lifting going, start getting some, uh, you know, additional stuff for S and C and just have this, this area, uh, you know, where people can, if they want to do this eight week on eight week off of these two or three different programs that we just have that rolling and ready to go. Okay. And then that way it can also all be structured into our calendar as well. Yeah. I think, and I think it'd be easy once we kind of all get together and get on the same page to find something to implement. Also have a program in place where people are able to kind of make those shifts on their own and, you know, be able to kind of tap into and see what their bodies really need to kind of stay on that course. Cause I think, like we said, we've, we've seen a lot of success in, in that format. And, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, not only is it really good for people's, you know, mentality, you know, to go from like training really, really hard for something and then you're past that moment. Yeah. And, and so now what now. most people are going to want to break. Yeah. And if we can, and our people like strength training. Yeah. So, you want to do something. It's all you want to sit on the couch for three weeks. Yeah. 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 So, but you get, but you get over just training, snatch and clean and jerk. Yeah. And so to have like those other avenues to play around with, to, possibly compete in during off season and things like that, I think would be something really, really cool that we could offer. Um, and then uh, coming out soon that I have you working on for us is an upper body push and pull uh, training. Yeah. It's coming together nicely. I'm not, I'm not cool. sure how much people are going to really like me after I do. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll like you when their summer bod looks amazing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah when uh when their when their pecs and biceps are popping yeah the, so it'll be a love hate <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a love hate it'll be a love hate why does so, yeah. have us doing arms three days a week <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so uh so hopefully we'll have that coming out in the next couple of weeks and uh i'm close to finishing we'll, that up so i think it'll be pretty quick yeah sounds good man well hey i appreciate you jumping on here and chatting with me dude Hey, thanks for having me on, man. It's been good to been good to talk and catch up a little bit. And it's been yeah, crazy with wants... things going on. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like it, this is the, the only way I get to really interact with people right now. <laughs> <laughs> so sad, but it's true. So, yeah, you know, funny thing, we're, we're talking right now. And one hour ago, my brother uh, had his first child. Oh, wow. And uh, your uncle now? Yeah. So So my first niece on my side of the family um we've got a niece on my my wife's side as yeah. well and so um yeah but you know we got some text message pictures but yeah, we that was it. Up there and all that so i was like i talked to robin a second ago i was like well i've got an ig live with jake in like an hour i mean is that okay she's like yeah we can't really go see them or do, can't anything. do anything yeah go ahead yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so I mean, even hard. even that, it's like we can't even be at the hospital with them, uh, you know, and and even you know, I don't even know when we're probably going to see our niece because it's a all, yeah. birth, and so unless we maybe go get tested and then immediately go see her, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's it's crazy. So, but I appreciate doing this. This makes me feel a little bit more like uh, I'm still I'm still being able to stay in touch with some of my friends. <laughs> you and I both, man. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting it's getting to that point, man. Yeah, um, but hopefully we'll get a chance to see each other soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, but I uh, appreciate it and talk to you soon, dude. Likewise. See you guys. Right. Later.